lawsuits are already piling up in several states, including Wisconsin and Pennsylvania, where there are challenges over the cutoff for counting mail-in ballots. Ohio is grappling with drop boxes, and Texas face a, faces a court challenge over extra days of early voting. This is a big question, but how do you see all these lawsuits playing out? Well, at this point, there's no indication that any of these lawsuits will have any impact at all on the outcome of the election. Um, there have been a whole variety of, of them, of course, and almost all of them uh, have been brought by Republicans seeking in one way or another uh, to l limit voting, uh, limit the counting of votes, and so forth and so on. The uh, outcomes uh, of those cases have varied from place to place and issue to issue. But I really, at this point, don't see any of those really uh, making much of a difference. Now, come tomorrow, um, if the presidential race turns on very close races in one or two states, legal issues in those particular states might start to assume a greater importance. Now, Trump has suggested he would contest election results. There's a possibility of that, and that the Supreme Court would then decide the result. Is that actually a scenario that could happen? Deeply, deeply unlikely. Um, uh, I think the only case in which the Supreme Court might play any significant role is if and I think it's, a very, again, very unlikely, if we had something like the replay of the 2000 election where the entire uh, election turned on the outcome in one state, and as was true in Florida back then, the, the results in the state were so close, it was really almost impossible. To this day, it's really impossible to tell who actually won Florida. In that case, uh, then uh, lawsuits become of some importance. And if they couldn't be resolved, maybe the Supreme Court might get involved. But I think Mr. Trump's expectation that somehow or other uh, he would be bailed out by the Supreme Court is quite unrealistic. Well, so one of the big talking points for Republicans has been that if Biden wins, he would pack the Supreme Court. Um, is that a realistic scenario? Well, I <laughs> the first the first thing that would have to be true uh, in order for that to be even plausible is for uh, Vice President Biden to win the presidency and for the Democrats to capture uh, the United States Senate and then for a whole bunch of other things to happen. For example, uh, the abolition of the, of the filibuster. At this stage, uh, I think that's uh, a, a tricky question. Um, I, although I think the, the, the election still looks quite positive, uh, for Vice President Biden, uh, the prospects of Democrats capturing a majority in the Senate um, look uh, a little more questionable. And that would have to happen before any sort of enlargement of the Supreme Court or indeed any of the lower courts would even be politically feasible. So I think all that, too, is very, very premature. Okay, Frank O. Bowman, we'll have to leave it there. Law professor, thank you so much for joining us. I want to bring in again Philip Turrell, our inter international affairs editor. Philip, all of these legal challenges really strike at the fundamentals of the American voting process. Well, there have been a lot of um, accusations that Donald Trump and the Republicans are, are trying to undermine democracy for exactly the reasons that we've just been hearing uh, in trying to prevent the counting of ballots. Uh, with this campaign that Donald Trump has been carrying out over the last few months about this widespread massive fraud that is apparently going to take place over uh, mail-in voting in, in the United States without giving any uh, reason for this uh, fraud and uh, getting any proof that it's actually going to take place, all in a bid to undermine uh, the desire by mostly Democrats to vote uh, via post. And that has led to fears now of violence in the United States, not only from the Democrats if they feel that their election has been taken away from them if Donald Trump wins, but also from uh, Republicans who may fear that or feel that their election of Donald Trump has been denied them because of the widespread fraud that Donald Trump has been talking about over the, the past few months. So all of this is making the base for this to be a normal uh, free and fair election uh, incredibly complicated. Uh, and 
right up until the last minute, we've seen these building up of barricades in major cities and towns around the United States because they fear that violence is going to take place. And it's also opened the door to radical groups who fear they have, who feel they have the support of Donald Trump, uh, like the Pride, Proud Boys, for example, uh, like uh, white supremacist groups, uh, to get involved in that, also saying that, that they want Donald Trump to be elected and that's opening the door to them uh, uh, undertaking or taking out uh, racist attacks. So we have a very volatile situation in the United States as we get into the, the final furlong now of this vote counting. Uh, and to be honest with you, it's looking more and more tense there and more and more uncertain as to actually who is going to win this vote at the end of the day.